Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the MFA Digital Marketing for Asia. My name is Joanna and I work as a marketing manager here at Sunbank Telecom Europe. In today's video, we are going to talk about five things you have to remember when you're trying to do business in Japan. But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to our DMFA channel and please keep on watching this video because it is very, very special today. Actually, I am joined by a very special guest today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Akari. Hi, I'm Akari. Nice to meet you, everyone. I am an account manager at DMFA. Um, I have experience to work in Japan over five years. So I would like to show you something like Japanese business model. I am not a master of business etiquette. I can show you some of ideas which are based on my job experiences. One of my senpai said that your uniqueness is built from imitating others' good attitude instead of bad. So you can select and fit something in your style. I hope this video might help you to build your uniqueness and your style and to understand Japanese business model. So please enjoy. Akari is actually uh, a master of Japanese business <laughs> etiquette. I am not. So she will be our sensei today. We will discuss five points. We will talk about how to meet somebody for the first time, how to introduce yourself in Japanese, how to exchange your business cards with your Japanese business partners, how to pour a drink. And lastly, we'll talk about the remote meeting business manners. Whenever you're doing business in Japan, you have to remember that the business culture and Japanese do's and don'ts might be very different from what you're used to in your own country. And of course, it applies to actually any country and any culture. So I think this is very, very important to learn at least, you know, those business etiquette basics in order to avoid misunderstandings or faux pas. Let's start from meeting somebody for the first time. Unlike in many Western countries, people in Japan don't really do handshakes, right? Yeah. What do you do instead? We just bow. Bow. When people meet each other in Japan, they don't do handshakes, they don't, they don't do hugs, they bow. Bowing in Japan can be used to signify emotions, including appreciation, gratefulness, not only when you meet somebody, but also when you want to say thank you or when you say bye bye mm -hmm. and stuff like this. I think bowing in Japan is so integrated into the Japanese culture mm -hmm. that even when you're talking to somebody on the phone, okay. yeah. people sometimes... Yeah. You, you do that. Bow to each other, even. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> even if this other person cannot see you, you yeah, still. I just do both. So Akari will tell us in which situations people can bow in Japan. Okay, such as like waiting someone and saying goodbye and at the start or end of the meeting, expressing your gratitude apologizing, congratulations someone, and asking for something like sumimasen, excuse me, or something, or sipping somewhere or something, and to show sympathy, like a, a same feeling, mm -hmm. and, and repeating, bowing it has a lot of meaning in Japan. And I think it is also important to remember that in Japan it is best to avoid physical contact in mm -hmm. the public space. So people don't do like high fives, <laughs> people don't hug. Yeah. So there is this very like private space that mm -hmm. we should not mm -hmm. cross. So I think here, like in the Western countries, sometimes during the meeting people do like, like this one, right? <laughs> uh, or handshake. So I think that would not be not appreciated away in particular business, I, I think also like doing a hug or handshaking <laughs> actually. I was trying to make do the research for this video. Uh, mm -hmm. I found information like why do we do handshakes in the Western culture? Mm -hmm. So basically it goes back like many, many years to like medieval ages when they were like warriors mm -hmm. and they were having like you no know, swords mm -hmm. or like, I don't um, know, some weapon. Yeah, so basically people would carry it in the right hand 
And when you do handshake, you usually put your right hand in front, which means like you don't have a weapon, so it, it, which means you are peaceful and you don't want any trouble. It's like a you know, safe greeting. So that's why we are doing a handshake to show everybody that we don't have a weapon with us. <laughs> Now we know how to bow when we meet somebody for the first time, but then how do you introduce yourself? Okay. I think this is a very good business practice to know how to at least introduce yourself and say your name in the language of the country mm -hmm. when you're trying to do business in. Let's practice introducing ourselves in Japanese. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> first thing we have to say when you're introducing yourself in Japanese is Hajimemashite, which means it's nice to meet you. And then you follow it up with SB Telecom Europa no Sawada to Moshimas. So in Japanese, uh, whenever you're meeting somebody for the first time and you're introducing yourself, you have to say the name of your company first, then you follow it up with your surname, and then you say to Moshimas, which mm -hmm. means my name is. So it is a little bit different than what we are used to in Western countries because in, let's say, Europe or the US, we usually say our first name first and then we say the company name. But in Japan, the order is the other way around. And then when you say hajimemashite, then you say your name. How do you finish it off? Dozo, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Those words are a little bit difficult to translate into English. The meaning of those words it's kind of like ceremonial and it is just a polite way yeah. to start off the relationship. Mm -hmm. I know that learning Japanese phrases might be a little bit difficult. So this is why we are going to prepare a little dictionary for you that you can find in the description down below and you can follow it whenever you are in your Japanese meeting. Mm -hmm. Now we are moving to the point number three which is business cards. This is yet another crucial point of the Japanese business culture. I think whenever you meet somebody for the first time, you can expect that there is going to be a business card exchange. Um, mostly before COVID, we mm -hmm. exchange the business card in person. And the situation changed a little bit after the COVID? Yeah, a little bit changed. We mostly use like an online business card. So sometimes we use business card background when I talk somebody on remote meeting. Presenting your business card in a correct way is also quite important. Mm -hmm. Business cards should be presented with both hands and they should be facing the person you are giving the business card to. When receiving a business card, you should also like accept it with mm -hmm. both hands. And I think it is also very important to treat all of the business cards with respect. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You shouldn't like put it yeah, in the pocket you or not do like that. when I receive some business card, I just put some like a business card during entire meeting. My laptop and next to business card. And I think it's also very important to remember about the seniority because even um the person who organized the meeting might not be the most senior person that's present at the meeting. So we have to remember that the most senior people should exchange their business cards first and then move down to like yeah. the, the people who are the, the last ones yeah, in the yeah, hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, right. Sometimes I forgot something like which one was that? <laughs> most <laughs> yeah. We are going to share some tips on how to make sure that the business card exchange goes as smooth as possible. Tip number one, just be prepared. You should know how many people is going to join the meeting and you should prepare the exact number of yeah. cards yeah. so you right. don't run out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. What yeah. happens if you run out? Sometimes, um, I'm sorry, I just forgot it. It's okay, because sometimes maybe there is more people joining the meeting than you were expecting, and sometimes you might run out. So I think the best mm -hmm. thing to do is just be honest. Be, be honest, yes. Mm, and apologize. I apologize, sorry mm -hmm. about that. And then... The second point is just be ready. Yeah. So whenever the meeting starts, just have your business cards with you, not like in your bag or anything <laughs> like this. Hold your business card mm -hmm. holder mm -hmm. and yeah, just be ready for the exchange it. because it will happen at the beginning of the meeting. When you are meeting the client, your card should go below the client's card and be sure to thank them for the card. And it is also a good idea to 
repeat the name of the person to make sure you can read it properly. It, it may also serve as an icebreaker or like a friendly way to start off the conversation if you're not sure how to pronounce the person's name or the person's name is very unique to ask. Them. Oh. How, how should I pronounce your names? It's a good way to kick off the conversation as well. In a polite way. Not like, oh, what's this? By now, everybody knows how to meet somebody for the first time, how to introduce yourself and how to exchange the business card. But what happens after the business meeting is finished? I think it is very common to hold business dinners in Japan. Yeah, sometimes in, uh, depend on the industry, but yeah. There might be a situation when you are invited to a business dinner. Here is something you should not forget when you're sitting at the Japanese business dinner table. Okay, let's talk about how to pour the drink. So I think the first rule is to never pour the drink for yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You should never like grab it and just and then the second rule is that usually the youngest person, I mean, the youngest meaning the, the person of the lowest seniority would usually be the person who's eyeing everybody's glasses and then going around the table, making sure everybody's glass is full. <laughs> She's the master of this yeah. one. <laughs> also, this is important, I think, not only in Japan, but everywhere to not drink until everybody gets their drink, uh, because it's also a very important thing to do a kampai. Yeah, 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 kampai. Like at the beginning of the dinner. Also, whenever you're doing kampai, which is cheers, you're meeting with a client, the client's glasses should go higher than your glasses. <laughs> the point number five is remote meeting rules. With the pandemic and COVID-19, the business meetings changed all around the world so we are moving away from face-to-face -face meetings to digital meetings in japan we share the agenda and document before the online meeting to the client i think you want to be as efficient as possible and you want everybody to know what the agenda for the meeting is going to be so you send the agenda before the meeting and you also send all the important docu documentation so the client can already have a look before the meeting starts yeah. to save time and be more efficient. Hmm. I think it's a good way to organize the meetings oh, and I think yeah. everybody should do it. Sometimes I think it is a kind of Japanese way. When I get some message, I can react something like put stamps or thank you, but we don't have to react all of the messages, but we just try to show the polite polite and important to react to all of the messages that are in the chat mm -hmm. is it like internal chat yeah internal chat whenever somebody is sending something on the group you should at least put like a stamp and that's it for today thank you so much for watching uh, i hope you could learn something new about the japanese business etiquette Akari, thank you so much for being our sensei today and I thank hope you. you will visit us again sometime soon. Yeah, definitely. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to our DMFA channel and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Bye!